So, and we're coming to a new topic. Uh, this April, there would be a special event, uh, the referendum in the Netherlands, but it would be devoted to the foreign topic, to the uh, Ukrainian-EU agreement, all of a sudden. And um, here we have Eva Tsukir, uh, who is a Dutch journalist currently in Ukraine, and that's something we really would like to discuss. You know, it's not a binding referendum, but it's an interesting thing which is used a lot, but Eurosceptics. Um, so can I really explain what is unique in this event because for us it sounds very very you know like sometimes even odd that you know in a foreign country there would be discussion on the uh, EU Ukraine agreement uh, and how much people in the Netherlands know um, as we know it's and how big is this topic in the Netherlands currently Thank you. Um, well, the topic is quite big. It's quite a heavy discussion going on currently in the Dutch media. Uh, we have two camps, uh, a pro-camp that is in favor of the association agreement with uh, Ukraine, uh, between the Ukraine and, and the European Union, and we have the, the camp that is against the association agreements. Um, it is quite a big topic. It's being discussed in Dutch media, by Dutch politicians, uh, by journalists, uh, of course. Um, but I wouldn't say that the vast majority of the Dutch people already has a clear understanding of what they are supposed to vote or to do on the 6th of April. But it seems like there are a lot of concerns and fears. I mean, is some of the opposition to signing this association agreement with Ukraine, is that fueled by the migrant crisis? Or where is the sentiment coming from? Oh, no, I think it's a more general sentiment that has been uh, existent in the Netherlands and in other European countries for a long time. Um, actually, I think uh, people lack a sense of ownership. So we are part of the European Union, but we don't really feel that we have something to say about what's going on. So this um, agreement has been signed by uh, all the countries of the European Union, including the Dutch government. But because um, we have a new law, it was adopted last year, um, which gives the Dutch people the right to enforce a referendum on important topics. Um, and there was this right-wing group of Eurosceptics. It's a, it's a journalistic platform in the Netherlands online. And they decided that they are going to collect, uh, collect signatures against the association agreement with Ukraine. And uh, we have some, uh, there are different polls and different sources. So from one, we have this poll on participation and current uh, we have that you know there is there are a lot of people going to come, uh, which uh, something had been before uh, considered as more or less a marginal issue, and also uh, at the same poll uh, there was the question, and it's interesting how it was asked. Mm -hmm. A free trade agreement with a country like Ukraine in bankruptcy and in war is irresponsible. Do you agree with that? or not. Uh, there is a bit of a bias in the question itself, but um, you know, for us it's also interesting, how come that Ukraine has become the topic of this referendum? The issue on the foreign policy, there are 27 countries in the European Union, there are many countries, there are the Balkans, you know, and all of a sudden there is one, you know, um, and also how much the people understand what this agreement is. Well, it's very valid questions. We also wonder why did Ukraine all of a sudden become the victim of this uh, process. Um, it's very clear because the legislation has just entered last year uh, that people get the right to enforce a referendum. So this group already also really clearly stated that they are not especially against Ukraine, but they do um, uh, want to show, uh, make a, a fist to, to, to the Dutch government. Um, and um, that's also reflected, I think, in these polls. But I think this point you were making at the beginning is a very good and very interesting one mm -hmm. about the Netherlands, um, not a small country, certainly by population, but also not the largest Definitely in the EU, not. right? <laughs> and so the sense of being a part of the EU, but not having the most decision-making power. And in mm -hmm. the past, when you've had different referendums, when it's come to the EU, it's been close or they've been rejected. I mean, there seems to be the sentiment of, if the EU is finally going to ask us, there's all this stuff we don't like, mm -hmm. so, you know, let's kind of... Yeah, make some but problems. I think a very important thing to keep in mind is is the is the level of information in you in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. People do not know uh, a lot of, uh, a lot about Ukraine. I what mean, is the image of Ukraine in the Netherlands? It's not very positive, I can tell you. Unfortunately, the No Camp is very is 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 um, um, doing a very aggressive, quite aggressive debate. They are coming with a lot of arguments that are not always true. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they are outright uh, copy of uh, things that have 
also been spread by, for but instance. But the Ukrainians are going to take your jobs away, or that they're all neo-Nazis, or what, what no, are they saying? It's very clearly that uh, we are about to to, um, to sign an agreement with a country in war, a country that's run by fascists, a country that has uh, clearly not shown any interest to improve in terms of corruption mm -hmm. or in any other reforms. We do not want to have such a country in, uh, in uh, closing an agreement. And many people also think that this is a first step into uh, an, uh, closing an, uh, an, uh, membership. And then it's Ukraine. really questioning to what extent Ukraine shares European values. I mean, democracy. It's true. Or, you yeah. Know, but I think, yeah, so this debate has been going on for quite a while. The most interesting turn that we now see is that the very leftist parties, mm -hmm. a party who are also very critical of Europe and against uh, Ukraine, they now say a free trade agreement is actually not good for Ukraine. So we have to save Ukraine actually from the evil coming out of the European Union. And I think that's a very interesting turn they're taking. Um, so I'll also remind our audience that EU agreement is more or less about the economy, about the, you know, trading the Ukrainian goods in um, in the European Union, but more or less also fixing the standards of the Ukrainian production and industry. So, for instance, the safety of the um, of the goods, safety of the dairy products, and things like that. First of all, um, so and how? Um, what is also interesting, you know, there is a no campaign, uh, and um, who can be in charge of the yes campaign? Because that's we understand it's not up to government. So we are here in a weird position, you know, as the Ukrainian. Uh, in a country which more or less has no connection to mm -hmm. the Netherlands. And it somehow looks there is nobody who can have a yes campaign and who can really explain <laughs> what it means. There is, a, there is quite a big group in favor and, and, and campaigning uh, for, uh, for the Ukraine, for Ukraine. Um, but this group is not as active as the no, it's not as aggressive, and it's more, uh, they're, they're trying to, 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 to have more nuance in the debate. And of course, as you know, nuance is not the favorite thing of the media. So, um, but I would definitely say there's a yes campaign. There's this group in the Netherlands that is called Vote for the Netherlands. They got a, quite a big amount of money from the famous American, um, a businessman, uh, Mr. Soros from Open, Fund uh, so Open Society Foundation. So they already started a yes campaign, but it's not very visible yet. Mm -hmm. So I think the no camp has definitely a big uh, advantage. Uh, also because the Dutch government is in favor, but they decided not to campaign. Mm -hmm. But now recently our prime minister decided to campaign because he sees that otherwise he is going to have a problem. So a less and, coordinated effort. And this uh, referendum, it's not binding, but it's also a bit of the, you know, uh, unclear situation for everybody because how the government has already approved that. Mm -hmm. So what if? Very interesting question. We're also wondering for the answer. Um, what if? Um, if there is a no vote, and it looks like it's going to be a no vote, um, actually the, the agreement that has already preliminary pre pre preliminary been implemented will not stop it it is not that's not the process so is if when the netherlands say no it's not going it's not stopping the ref the um the agreement implementation. But um, as I understand, and actually the European Co Commission is rather fuzzy about this, they're pretty secretive because they don't want to comment on a potential you know, outcome of no. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think that it is now um, the European Commission has to approve and then all the European member states have to ratify this approval again. So actually, in the most crazy um, scenario, or the most funny one, we would in a couple of months be voting again in a referendum whether we are going to stop the agreement. I mean, it's, of course, it's unlikely, but you know that the European, we, in the European Union, <laughs> nothing is unlikely. So we'll keep going on. All right, well, we'll keep following that topic. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Just to remind Thank our viewers, that was Eva Tsukira, a Dutch journalist who joined us here to talk about the forthcoming Dutch referendum about uh, Ukrainian EU association status. We'll be right back.